live. Do you know, hello, Dr. Matthews. I only just started, sorry. How are you? How are you? Can you, oh, I have to join. 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 Hang on, let me see if I can. Where's your, have you asked to join Dr. Matthews? Add. Maybe now. Waiting for, Dr. great, okay. Well, I think I've connected with you, great. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, can you see me? I can't see myself. I can see you. <laughs> I can see you okay. perfectly. Um, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. Good. Yes. How's your, um, son? How's your son? Yeah, he he is right now sleeping, so okay. very peaceful, I should say. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> how old is he? He has turned three in this March, so. It's a beautiful age. It's a lovely yeah. age. They're asking questions all day long. They're sweet. Uh, yeah. Alive, I don't know how, how 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 energy is being managed in that body because they seem to have unlimited Absolutely. resources. <laughs> Absolutely. Luckily, my neighbors have a, a three-year-old, so I hear him running around the garden and chat, 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 and I love it because it takes me back to when mine was three. And I just, you know, I didn't miss that time because every time mm. is beautiful and bountiful and wonderful, but... Uh, it's lovely to hear it. It's really yeah, I should say th there's no need for any special entertainment here. Yes, it's full time absolutely. entertainment, absolutely. and I I don't see any difference with the lockdown. It's still because the whole attention is on this guy who is an attention yes. seeker. At yes. that age, I think all kids are. Absolutely. Uh, Do you not wonder, like my my parents had seven children. Do you not wonder hmm. how how did they do it? Like we find one is a handful. How yeah. did they manage seven? I think the um, my parents, both of them, one was uh, my dad was one out of eleven, and wow. mom one out of one out of six. Oh my! And goodness. I think I think at their time, I think the the families were joint families, so there are multiple people doing multiple yeah. uh, work in the house. So. If 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 somebody is in that age where they are having constantly babies, I don't think they'll be doing anything else other than that. <laughs> no, no. And actually, if they are doing more, like my mother had seven and she was running, uh, she was running the shops. Then mm. she was coming home cooking for guests. And now, sadly, she's uh, much older and she has late stage dementia. And I oh. think she's a, had a very uh, she had a bathroom balance where because she never stopped, there was so much going mm. on all the time that when she finally stopped she didn't know how to do it mm. you know, she'd gone into overdrive and i think that is a problem yeah yeah that that's the vata effect also with with exactly. age vata yes. naturally sort of increases that's why we see those uh, nervous and joint related issues as age progress yes and if we don't prepare for that phase in life early enough our ability to deal with all those degenerative issues, it can be dementia, it can be any form, will be, will be slightly lesser. I think yes. it's, it's, sort, it's sort of like, uh, I think a lot of these practices even in India, like I see my, my parents are also like approaching 75 uh, above now. And, and they do sort of regularly sort of self oil application, even though it's right. messy. Or, or a bit sort of smelly, they do complain, but they still manage to do some oil application and, and do understand that these are, even though they don't technically know that this is vata or uh, yes. even, even, even sort of it's like a pra regular practice, you, you, they know that it's needed. Yes, it's innate. Yeah. It's an innate knowing, yeah. So Dr. Matthews, I... I believe we found each other through Jasmine. I don't know who found who first, yeah. but I think it was through Jasmine. I'm pretty sure. And yes, so I yes. I didn't actually know so much about you other than I really warmed to you. And sadly, now if I try and do, um, if I try and do a live with my father-in-law, it, it will be a disaster. I mean, he's 87 and he would try his best, but it could be quite a challenging thing to do. So it was lovely to see someone who had so much knowledge that we could mm. share that knowledge and um tell me where your journey began are you are you from a family of doctors or 
So uh, I I am and I am not because I think uh, when I actually chose Ayurveda, I chose it because of a uh, un unknown uh, coincidence. In fact, I I studied the language Sanskrit in school, oh, which wow. was which was forced upon me. I didn't choose it. Uh, the teachers chose it for me because it was good to score marks <laughs> it's funny oh. how things come up and yeah. and i was good at it and and when i actually finished and uh, decided on a career i actually went uh, uh, into an engineering uh, background so i started studying instrumentation i was doing welding and stuff and a couple of months later i got a letter from the state entrance commissioner saying that there are only few people who know sanskrit who who are also eligible to study ayurveda why don't you try and yeah i i just decided immediately okay let's let's try and after i started studying i realized that uh, my grandfather's younger brother who i had never seen but uh, was an eye doctor at that time obviously an ayurvedic eye doctor yeah. netra vaidya and uh, he tried to teach my my father and his younger brother ayurveda but they never spoke about these things in that they, they don't no, i think no. yeah at that generation they don't share very much no. and uh, i i knew about it only after i started studying and my uh, my uncle was mentioning about he knows ashtangrade and i was asking how do you know that because he said he was again he tried to learn but he couldn't and he stopped so there is a traditional link i didn't know that when i chose yeah. it and in fact i regretted uh entering ayurveda initially because there's lots of philosophy yes, yes. language uh, the, uh, we have to go deeper into sanskrit yes. and we have to study the all the modern concepts we have to do uh, dead body dissections and at the same time learn uh, nyaya vaisheshika siddhanta and uh, really mind uh, puzzling kind of ideologies uh, ayurveda but, shows you i think sort of sort yeah. of but yeah. but gradually i realized that in time i sort of personally also experienced uh, how how ayurveda was impacting me i could see like people coming in on wheelchairs and stretchers and walking back home most of the uh, conditions we treated at the our college was uh, musculoskeletal like paralysis and wow. uh, paraplegia dr matthews where was this that? is north north part of kerala place okay. called palakkad right uh, calicut university was the was the name of the university and and you could see that happening the only thing was you are trained up till that certain education to see things logically and try and analyze things in a certain different kind of view or different method and and our teacher in our first class i remember told told us how asked us how much is 1 and 1 plus 1 and and everybody answered 2 and he said wrong if you can come up with a different answer then we can go forward and everybody started thinking and nobody could come up with any different answer he said 1 plus 1 can also be a big one uh, so if if you can sort of think about things in a slightly different way if you keep that open mind then you will be able to and they also identify that uh, the teaching system in india leading towards ayurvedic education is still like what is studied in gcse and everything here which is yes. not suitable for learning such a uh, deep and vast philosophical science mm -hmm. but uh, you gradually undo it it's like learning to drive here in uk i came here and i suddenly <laughs> got into driving and i have dr driven a car in india for like 10 years but I, i i then figured out that it's not the same and then uh, got a driving lesson and they said can you undo a little bit of learning that you did in india and that's what we need also to learn ayurveda we need to undo a little bit of our scientific so called scientific learning yes then only we can actually absorb it otherwise you will feel like you are adding more of the same information but herbal yes uh, if you want to do it in the real essence then you have to also unlearn a few things and that's what i felt that, and you're always learning right like I, when i go to my father in law's house there are books everywhere and he'll say 
do you know what I learned today? And it's like a never ending learning, right? Like yes, so never... the, the, the textbooks in Ayurveda, yes. most of them, yes. uh, the main ones that we learn uh, in South of India is Ashtangradaya. Uh, and the meaning is, is based on a culture, a society and lifestyle 2000 years ago, because it's a 2000 years old book. And if you want to understand it, word by word meaning it completely uh, it can be easily misunderstood because you are not living in that era now mm -hmm. so how you understand the meaning is a reflection of you itself yes so when you read it every time yes. you gradually come up with like like the one of the most basic sloka of uh, ayurveda is in ashtanga there, there is vata pitta kafas chedi treyo dosha samasadaha which means Vata, Pitta and Kapha are the three doshas, which we yes. studied and did everything. And when I read it now, it has one word which means Samasadaha, which means uh, in essence, it doesn't mean that there is only three dosha. Yes. There can be more. You, yes. you can actually, if you can come up with uh, ideas and, and thought uh, related to that, you can come up with a fourth or a fifth one. But for ease of understanding, we will look at these three. That's the actual meaning of that. And I know doctors, like academic level doctors, who are not clinicians, like in colleges in Kerala, who are experimenting on to finding out, can we do four or can we do five doshas instead of three? I've, 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 my teachers in, who, are, who have te taught us and are doing sort of PhDs and things in, in Kotekel, which is one of the oldest uh, university. Uh, they were talking recently when I had a chat about five doshas. Wow. How can we actually elaborate this based on our current lifestyle? So yeah. it's always very interesting to look at uh, uh, the actual knowledge based on how much we can absorb and understand. Yes. So yeah. yeah. And you, you'll meet it where you are, I guess. Like, you know, there are books that I've got that when I first read them, they could have been Spanish. I mean, and I can't read Spanish. And, you know, depending on where you are on your journey, your understanding changes, right? You know? Completely, that's especially a science are, like this. Yeah, and I think that's why there are so many versions of the Bhagavad Gita, because if you try and read the Bhagavad Gita and you are not of that level of understanding, you will misconstrue the message completely. Yeah. So it's better yeah, true, to have but... a translation that is at your level than to go for the real thing which you want 100 percent yeah and i think that's kind of how i realize and what's wonderful yeah. is you make it and jasmine makes it and you know there are people who make it really nice and accessible for where where the west is now and that's brilliant so with that in mind we did have questions for you uh the first question was a lady um sent us a message saying that she has uh endo i can never say that word endo endometriosis that's the one <laughs> And um, it's, quite, um, it's quite severe. So she's changed her diet. Uh, she's a vegetarian. She's changed her diet. And she was asking, what is the Ayurvedic view of it? And what else could she do? Right. So endometriosis uh, is a modern diagnosis. So to give an Ayurvedic view of a modern diagnosis is a very strenuous, effortful affair. But I will, based on experience, I can tell you, it is, it is uh, uh, some form of, improper uh, hormonal function which has sort of manifested in uh, those cells which produce um, the during the shed during the uh, menstrual cycles being present in some other place other than the uterus so the uterus is equipped to do that in a most severe condition there has been history of endometriosis happening even the nose where the person feels a cyclic nosebleed and thought that it's a regular nosebleed. But that's quite rare. It is not very common for the cells to reach that far. So common form of endometriosis is where the fallopian tube and towards the uh, ovaries tend to spill out. Uh, again, Ayurvedic medicines for that kind of condition will not immediately resolve it. What we can prevent is most of the time body actually en encapsulates those areas so that the bleeding or any of the cells doesn't go into inflammation or cause any mechanical obstruction and then it's gradually reabsorbed so it's painful but the body knows how to deal with it 
what happens normally is a, a, a pitta imbalance with slight association of kapha most of the time i'm making assumptions yeah again uh, generally that's what happens and what we immediately recommend is sort of a uh, pitta balancing diet so that there is not much acidic tendency and uh, pitta usually comes with a excess of flow and st- heavier bleeding which usually results in some form of uh, these complications so we recommend sort of going on a cooling kind of a routine taking things easy during the cycle so that mechanically there is no reason for these uh, dislocations to happen and uh, just give your body the best opportunity to reabsorb it i don't think any uh, sort of direct uh, more in modern science also any, any direct treatment will be uh, conducted to remove those cells unless it is very severe or the infection is very bad so the best thing is to help the body deal with it which is mostly pitta balancing cooling uh, less acidic form of diet lots of vegetables fruits taking things easy during those time uh, near to those times and then letting the body uh, help deal with that situation naturally okay. and there's um now every whim, every month women shed uh, every month women have a cycle which is a blessing right because we're getting rid of toxins in our body is do you think that's partly why women live longer than men right uh i don't see a direct correlation between both of these but i think uh, uh, the function of uh, reproduction has two two sides to it one is it is a highly sophisticated act it's almost like where human beings are as near to god as possible wow. uh, to to nurture a new life and to be able to do that Uh, i think the whole system around that function should be as good as new it yeah. can't have corrupt cells or toxins or anything so a threshold level at that level around the uh, shetra or the uterus is very low and uh, any sort of toxins will be immediately removed in every cycle so that's a natural process it's not proportionate to the whole body levels of toxins because people might have immense level of toxins inside might be actually smoking drinking everything yes. but the uterus will be pristine because of this once a month exercise it, there won't be much uh, uh, say any form of uh, cyst accumulation carcinogenesis nothing will happen most of the time when this shedding happens properly uh, i don't think that helps the whole body cleansing because this cleansing is quite localized and very efficient but it's not connected to what we call as the antakoshta or mahasrota or the main channel yeah. the highway the the m1 m25 is our digestive system yes unless things get uh, cleansed out of that pathway most of the toxins in the body will not go out so long life in women i think i don't know i think i think with every child birth there can be a renewal of the whole system uh which i believe might actually help this is purely based my mom was 44 i think when i was born wow. so she always say this is not a sort of anecdotal this is not evidence she always say that the the late age pregnancy and all the after care which which has been done did sort of help her overall health in general so i think the process of childbirth does give women immense sort of a capability and that yes. nature has encoded it into it uh but not the menstrual cycle itself because that's i, I yeah. this is purely yeah. my opinion nowhere yeah. i don't no, think no, it's there in the text right. otherwise <laughs> man we'd be having a party we we just it'd be so lucky for us um i'm so sorry i'm so absorbed talking to you that i've been missing the questions i apologize if people wouldn't mind typing them again because i'm very bad at focusing in one area and looking in another so if you don't mind typing again another question i had doctor was about um diabetes because it seems to be on the mm. rise now and i've read it's more so in men um what do you think is the cause of diabetes and ayurvedically what can we do well i know the i know the cause but what can we do yeah i think cause wise we have been always focusing on diabetes and thinking that it's 
it's just an issue with sugar level and treating it that way i think diabetes is much more a, i think it's a much more a sign of a overall imbalance going on in the whole metabolic system which is uh, quite sort of intertwined and uh, interconnected with immunity and all of that so the the treatment usually in ayurveda for any illness is bringing back the body's ability to heal properly so it's more sort of uh, two or three main things are focused in diabetes one is to find out what immediate cause whether it is related to a diet related uh, issue or if it's related to a low grade systemic inflammation going on uh, in the body or if it's an autoimmune reaction happening in the system so first primary first treatment which will be uh, nidana pariversion or causative factor elimination that's different for different cause factors mm-hmm. the second will be to help um, the metabolic system to be maximum efficient so that there can be sort of proper utilization of this uh, sugar present in the body the energy stored can be utilized properly person can feel energetic so mostly that comes through a diet pattern certain herbs which are known to be helpful in this stimulation of uh, insulin production stimulation of uh, muscle tissues to absorb more of this uh, uh, insulin and glucose in that process and activities there is no shortcut unfortunately yeah. there are herbs called as insulin plant and different sort of plants are there which are known to be effective but that sort of goes together with diet activity uh, and and addressing that first cause whether it is inflammation and acidic tendency and autoimmune response because if you don't do that then it might manifest somewhere else as a yes. thyroid issue or a pcod or somewhere else where the cause will be exactly the same right okay okay so now another question i saw come up twice or three times and i'm sorry i missed it was about ghee but um how to utilize ghee how to use ghee but it was a long word and i'm sorry i missed that beginning with m a certain kind of ghee i think it was a particular it? name i did see that it uh, i think yeah, it was mahatikta grida that's it yeah, uh, so uh, the spelling was wrong but it's still mahatikta well, um well, mahatikta <laughs> yeah i don't think it's it's in the scope of this chat itself to explain the uh the effect of mahatikta but mahatikta is generally maha mean mahatikta means it's extremely bitter tikta right. is bitter okay. so it's mainly uh, a herb uh, a ghee preparation with uh, bitter herbs so bitter usually towards uh, balancing pitta and balancing more of uh, any rakta dusha or blood related issues skin related issues uh, mahatikta is very useful in uh, uh migraine or uh, acidity related issues and mahatikta is also used in as a cleansing ghee where you start with the preparation using drinking mahatikta and then do that now i don't think mahatikta will be available in uk uh it wouldn't be that much sort of a useful affair to just think about mahatikta but just ghee itself is yes. quite powerful in terms of helping and sort of lubricates the system we all are like uh, uh genuinely we accumulate a, a lot of stuff inside our body if there is not enough flow or lubrication and ghee usually helps in that process along with nourishing you just take a spoon right you just orally take a spoon or you put it on your dal or put it on your food yeah ghee can be used exactly like butter in whichever way you wish to use uh, it it's perfectly fine i think the only thing is ghee is also like butter uh, a, a milk product so you should be aware that it shouldn't even though it's healthy shouldn't be overdoing it yes should still do within uh, what yes. you would have normally in a diet routine unless it's sort of suggested as a medicine okay so when you're having it orally just on a spoon that's more medicinal whereas when you're having it in your food that's more just an overall benefit Yes, yes that's right so when you take it in a spoon make sure that you always uh, um always follow it up uh, by some warm liquids because we know it's common logic that oil doesn't go very far if there is not much yes. hot water or something to push it yes. further so 
drink some hot water if it's part of a meal then we assume that it's already warm meal and it will easily sort of get absorbed yeah and can you tell me the at the moment with the current situation that we're going through if you were to give people three tips on staying healthy at this time something that's manageable obviously it's a very big topic but three things that are manageable that they could do for themselves to to support them in this time firstly to support their mental health because that's a very mm. issue at the moment then to support their physical health mm. uh, yeah those two right so i think when we talk about the current issue the virus yes. you know we heard hearing a lot so uh, the 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 current uh, pandemic we should always look at it in a slightly more holistic way i'm sort of seeing that i before i tell you the tips i feel always that needs to be shared the fact that when it is reported like how many people have the illness how many are uh, how many unfortunately lose their life in in india i i i also follow indian news and, yes. and and especially in kerala i can see that there is also a clear mentioning of how many people gets recovered and is discharged from That's the nice. care That's so nice. so it's very important to maintain that holistic view because uh, imagine if if 200000 people have got this illness then 90% or more than 90% of it got well without doing any medicine even though they were in hospital or if they were just at home yes. there was no medicine still so if they got well they got well because of what we call as their own natural strength yes. and immunity yes it's very easy to ignore that saying that it's not un, it's unscientific but it's such a hard big number that 90% getting well on their own there should be something that can be done so yeah. in that context what i would always say is there's one thing which needs to be definitely uh, looked at is if you already have any risk factor there is definitely a point of um, is to is to stay away from contact and make sure that you are safe otherwise whenever you are in contact also we can make our body uh, better uh, give better ability to fight because we understand upper respiratory tract symptoms and issues are related to kapha more sort of accumulation of yeah. mucusy tendency so if we manage to do few things to take care of kapha then that takes care of the risk factors that can prevent it secondly for the mental health and mind i think what what we need to accept is including me uh, the, this is hard this is difficult so if it has an impact on your mind it is completely natural we are human beings so accept that fact and i think the only thing that has changed is routine if anybody has messed up their routine they will suffer so try and get back to a sensible routine it doesn't have to be very regimental or but definitely do get back to a routine that will be uh, usually you know day to day activities which are good for our health we do it because we don't think about it if we really think about it we might actually skip those things because it's difficult to decide what's good for us all the time yes. perfectly uh, well so routine is what i would recommend for and in that routine if you can include breathing exercises or some simple meditation now there is a flooding of meditation audios and video in the even in instagram there's live ones use them which is it's helping a lot of people if you look at those comments if you are one of those person whose mind is racing or uh, calculating numbers or planning the, what to do next do do something that will help soothe the system calm down the system now coming back to kapha i think it's very important to know that this mucusy tendency is increased by this weather itself this weather is slightly moving from cooler weather to the spring season which where there is more pollen and and this 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 is a kapha aggravating season so make sure that you are taking something warm start your day with a warm liquid uh, now most of us are attracted to tea and coffee they don't have much medicinal value unfortunately uh try and have a drink like i have warm water every morning i have to it's like a you know it's a habit but then i do enjoy my coffee after too so i'll have 
three glasses of water, warm water for every one coffee, but I'll have one coffee, no more. But do you think one is okay? Like, is, does it do much harm to have one? See, it depends from person to person. Yeah. I know uh, people who consume six, seven, eight, I don't know, so many at, at offices yeah. and all to stay alert and stay focused. Uh, coffee is comparatively all right in colder countries because coffee is acidic and warming. So if you generally don't have a reflux tendency and a high pitta nature, then you will get away with having one coffee and you'll be perfectly fine. But if you still feel headachey or acidic tendency, even one can do harm because you're doing it every day. Yeah. It's just the repetition that creates the accumu accumulation. So just getting back to the kapha remedies, one is yeah. warm liquid. Yeah. And another one very, very easy thing to do is to make sure that by 4 p.m. in the evening, try and finish off all the grains. Grains will be rice, oats, wheat, pasta, anything made of those grains, uh, try and stick to more vegetables. It doesn't have to be carb-free. You can still have root, root vegetables, sweet potato, potato, carrot, beetroot, anything. Uh, you can have fish or chicken if you oh. are sort of meat eater. You can have meat also. I'm not against meat. Yeah. But for kapha tendency, it's best to avoid any grains at night right. and keep uh, cheese and uh, very heavy milk products also minimum at night. Uh, so that it doesn't cause extra accumulation. Uh, in the tea that you have in the morning, you can add herbs like pippali, which is long pepper or ginger. Uh, ginger, black pepper and long pepper together in Ayurveda is known as trikadu, which is very common like trifala and every yeah. so, so some of those herbs, which is quite common. And that is considered to be really kapha balancing and it's a good start of the day. So also it's a good you know, we set our intentions right when we start our day properly. I've seen myself, if I'm giving my day a good start with good intention towards positive health and positive action, that just uh, continue to reflect through the day. I don't have to excessively focus on it. What, that's wonderful tips, wonderful tips. What's your, um, what's your wish for the future of Ayurveda now? Uh, right. I, I think... Uh, my wish before this issue, uh, virus issue, and now has not changed. I think uh, UK is quite receptive to uh, Ayurvedic science and all traditional knowledge. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, my wish for Ayurveda, in, in particularly in this country, is to get the uh, medicines as well as the practitioners standardized in certain level so that there can be further improvements and, and things which we can communicate properly with the public. Now, what happens is uh, uh, the medicines are not that much standardized. Some of them come from India, some of them yes. from, right. yeah, you know, better yes. than me. Yes, right. I've only experienced in like three or four years. Yes. And and uh, the the practitioners are also different kind. I think we definitely need a lot of people to actually educate and teach others and then there should be different levels of this practice I where it becomes because, more yes effective and serious yeah because um i could take my exam soon and be a practitioner but i honest to god i wouldn't feel comfortable to actually be a practitioner because hmm. i think i would be at quite an elementary level you know yeah so, I, I i i completely agree i think yeah. you, it's a, it's a reflection of your knowledge that you agree that I do. Most, some I really people, do. unfortunately, with half knowledge will not actually feel that. They will see that I can't do, I can do trifla, I can do ashwagandha, so I should be fairly all right, which is fine. I think with, with, with some element of nutritional level practice, it's perfectly fine. See, I, an Ayurvedic practitioner coming from, I'm not saying it should be from India, but my experience is from Kerala. Uh, we have to go through... Um, like I said, from the first year itself, dissection and anatomy and physiology, we are dealing live body, yeah. cutting and studying each and every body tissues, and then go into then go into visit and and in modern hospitals we are posted for months to study minor operation theater procedures. We we see multiple uh, cesarean sections, different 
procedures in different departments to learn how the mainstream medicine is how the mainstream diagnosis is what are the risk factors involved in diagnosing its people's life so you can't actually be uh, half sure but i think there are some some elements which especially in propagating this sign ayurveda never actually existed or survived in india as a practitioner centered uh, okay. science ayurveda always survived as home remedies and yes. Yes. the elder person in the family yes. uh, forcing everybody to take ghee castor oil Absolutely. telling others that i've got vata in my knee or telling others there's a bit of pitta coming out in from my stomach so yes. those actually kept ayurveda alive so that needs to be there and there needs to be more education more people actually getting into this science but diagnosis treatment uh, understanding what are the prognosis of any particular health condition those needs a different level of uh, knowledge i think i, I, I feel so I and and there should be like in it's not a model which is completely new like i'm quite passionate about this so if you feel it's going too much you should no, tell no, me like in this lady saying one uh, year training after degree yeah i think that i agree with you doctor if there were different levels of training like for me i wanted to do it because i wanted to be able to support my son and my husband mm-hmm. and my sister with that elementary knowledge to be able to say okay you have lymphedemia i know that you could start here or there but not to really go in depth and charge people and if more of us were doing that we would have more we would have more say so over our health like it's about knowing yourself right But yeah 100% but it's you need a different level if you're to go to an expert you want a different level so i think we need to have different levels where you're like a black belt in ayurveda and i'm you know you know <laughs> i'm still not a, black belt no well uh, you know may, maybe you're getting closer to a black belt and i think my father in law is a black i i genuinely think he is a black belt from everything i i know of him hmm. but i'm not even you know i'm just a trainee and that's good i'm happy with that but yeah i think that that too many degrees are being handed out to willy nilly at the moment you know because that itself is also um a revenue stream for people right and nothing wrong with that but it's almost too easy i think you know yeah i think uh, there there should be this and there should be the other one as well i like i was going to say yes. that in some middle eastern countries and in germany or some other uh, european countries if you have to practice in a certain level you have to go through certain standardized tests which actually test your safety first aid modern knowledge not your ayurvedic knowledge because ayurvedic knowledge you, it's a, it's a window that you learn to open yes. and then it's it's the amount of experience and time you learn gradually it's not unsafe to prescribe trifla instead of people yes. this this yes. limited damage in that but the modern knowledge is very much necessary which i think most of the courses here are really good in ayurvedic teaching it's really oh, good oh, in good. theoretical yeah. teaching yes uh, the theory part is quite uh, uh, in depth the sort of effort being put i the courses i know uh, but really the practical it. knowledge is weak mm-hmm. sorry yes yeah, that's really good to hear yes you're right the theory was um but and and we went very deep into the history of ayurveda and so on but if i go to somebody and talk to them about the books you know if i say it comes you know there's some of it and other that's not really going to help their knee so you're right it's a lot more on fear on um, yeah your theoretical knowledge will be actually as good or even maybe better than mine because here it's more academic understanding of yes. uh, reaching key knowledge factors and everything is slightly better that culture of study is slightly better here yes. in india it's about reaching certain scores that you have to score 50% to pass this examination but you can actually skip a few topics easily yes, yes. while doing that yeah but i think it's it's about practical application and uh, i think yeah training and practical application would i you, think that's very really important you, would you offer training would you offer I am I'm currently not but in future I would like to sort of keep people like yourself who have completed and wanted to sort of uh, shadow somebody practicing for a yeah. short period of time to just see like I learned by 
sitting in consultation rooms with almost all my teachers and i was shameless yes. i would wait outside the room for days to get one opportunity because there will be a lot of contenders for that and they don't let uh, the the room to be crowded because obviously it's a private appointment so uh, i i did that myself to understand how it's practically done five and a half years of learning in india i was still as good as as not confident uh, at all to do a practice after that uh, i was uh, then then we do a one year of internship training in hospitals and then still i was half convinced and then i, I took other opportunities to shadow wow. practitioners i think i was still learning for another two or three years uh, and and then i was feeling confident that even without feeling on private post into doing things on my own so i started to learn <laughs> wow that's incredible and i agree it would be such a privilege to shadow somebody and to learn that way if we almost yeah it's it's a yeah. we almost yeah it's an important database. experience we need a database of people that people can shadow in their local area it would be a really nice way to do it uh what is the best place to learn ayurveda in the uk i, I would comment on that <laughs> i wouldn't also because i know a few people and i'm also trying i'm also sort of part of couple of them in in teaching certain subjects i wouldn't comment but uh there are many places you could look up online easily yeah but you could um you could go to the ayurvedic um like the body and you'll see the different places mm. you can study on there so maybe check yeah yeah that. definitely uh and then i would phone up the different colleges that you try and ask questions of them and see see which one resonates with you because it really is a very i think you get an intuitive feeling for you know where feels right for you and um and go with that you know go with that and then maybe talk to students who have studied there and see what their opinion is hello hello gerald nice to see you here um so that's really interesting gout somebody asked me mm-hmm. to ask you about gout would you mind what about in kerala yes. sorry sorry doctor where would you recommend in your home in your in back home right so learning ayurveda in kerala is definitely is learning ayurveda at the best place you can learn but there are limitations you need to understand the language yes. because all the patients will be speaking yes. the local language it will be practically not possible to uh, do a hospital rounds uh, so any particular place again there are colleges which do short courses like introduction courses which you can opt for mostly they are done by modern doctors in various european countries they come to kerala for like 6 uh, months course on ayurveda after modern study so they know the anatomy physiology biochemistry and then the basics are good they just need to know a different view point and herbs and things like that yes. which they learn in intensive 6 uh, months course there are course places in gujarat and Uh, which is one of the famous place i should mention is gujarat ayurveda university in jamnagar oh, they have a good uh, good course that. right okay uh, banaras hindu university varanasi that's where my father in law studies yes yeah, so so that they also do specific uh, foreigners focused english based course so the language will great. be not be a problem great and you will get to shadow really uh, experienced doctors um, i think i think those are really good if you look up in their website they are not really fancy websites but they they will have information about these courses for sure that's great and um uh, bitu is asking for his uh, friend about gout right so gout is actually again considered to be more a uh, inability to cleanse the body is not able to cleanse certain metabolic waste like here it's uric acid and uh, gravity funny enough is bringing it to some of the joints which are just on the floor so it accumulates there and our toe gets affected uh, which is pure physics in some way so i think the uh, main focus should be on supporting the kidney there are specific herbs which can be safely tried single herbs are safe like uh, gokshura gokshura is uh, tribulus terrestris there usually uh, mild diuretic and also a 
kidney strengthening herb which tends to eliminate this excess sort of uh, toxin from the system again gouty arthritis is also a uh, slight pitta influence with a vata association so make sure that uh, the causes towards accumulating to the lower limbs is related to vata so helps with some oil application uh, upward massaging strokes uh, it's very good to do sesame oil application it's very good to do a diet which is less acidic not too much of animal proteins for obvious reason because uric acid is a metabolic waste of protein metabolism and and uh, yeah i think those are the general sort of guidelines i would recommend uh, for pitta vata balancing and uh, helping the kidney function properly it's quite common now right gout has become quite a uh... what do you find actually is the most common reason people come to you i think the most common reason is my, my practice has been for attracting a lot of people with digestive issues yes uh, most common uh, is is uh, various kinds of inflammatory yes. bowel disorders they have different interesting names crohn's I, ibs crohn's, ibd yeah, crohn's is uh, big now hey it's become yeah, so many of them so the, the the depending on the severity uh, some of them can be better treated with uh, herbs and diet uh, if it is too severe obviously you need to be uh, taking care of your um, like it, if it can actually lead to very serious complications so those needs to be taken care but lot of the cases i have seen has gone through people go through phases like there will be a a uh, very strong aggressive symptomatic phase yeah. where you might need to go through the conventional medicine route but if it is recurring repeating then there might be things that you are doing unknowingly which is feeding the beast so you can make changes in your diet changes in uh, routine take some preventive herbs to not fall into that cyclic repetition of inflammation happening so that's one of the common uh, cause uh, people will come to me anxiety and uh, sleep associated issues are also quite common mm. um, yeah these are the main ones i i usually you know people call me like a ayurvedic gp cuz my practice does not involve a lot of treatment it's it's purely because i don't have the facility i would have loved to have all the system but the practice i have currently is purely focused on diet herbs Yeah. and and sort of making yourself do all the treatment so if you have to do oil application you have to do it on yourself which is more that's effective in that's not a bad in, thing that's no bad thing no not at all but it might not people. be you're empowering yeah but you. uh, yeah. i i feel it might not be that effective if somebody is having very strong uh, mobility issues yeah. or where it would be good to have other people doing it yes yeah uh, like like for example recovering after a stroke yes. it's quite effective to do it with a combination of physiotherapy and ayurvedic massages will regenerate the whole system up to 9900% quite effectively depending on how where the lesion was with the stroke yes but uh, we can't do that we don't have the facility to no. take a person no. uh, in in india it would be slightly more easier i think also the nice thing about people being able to do it themselves is that you know we offer treatments at the bulgari spa but mm-hmm. not everybody can afford the bulgari spa right so the nice mm-hmm. thing about you being able to empower people is at least there's no excuse you know people can't say well i can't afford it well just buy your bot- buy a bottle of sesame oil and there you go you know you just use your hands and off you go and so the barriers to actually doing something about it are then lifted by you empowering people yeah. to do it themselves i think it's a good thing yeah i think i think uh, the the only thing drawback with self application is mm. you have to be motivating yourself yes yes some sometimes we struggle when we yes. are in pain or in in the middle of the crisis it's usually difficult to see that okay this is helping uh, other than that i really like the practice here in fact i'm so used to it if i do it in the other way i'll struggle for a few weeks yeah, uh, to yeah. get used to the indian kind of practice where the doctor just uh, prescribes the treatment and the diet is all done by somebody else treatment is done by somebody else you have less things to worry about which will be difficult for me <laughs> yes yes 
but it is a one but that also is a wonderful thing like up until up until two years ago my father was doing french karma every year but the last time he went actually it made him ill because he went for three weeks too long okay for his age way too long and actually the doctor did even say to him you know you've done two weeks it's more than enough you should stop now and he was saying no i'm enjoying it i want to do another week and actually it was detrimental because he's not fully recovered since then because you can oh only... i think i think it's a, i think it might have been a strong influence that your father in law is a practitioner he might have actually had an influence on the doctor because yeah. panchakarma is strictly a system where there are phases of That's preparation right. shouldn't have all cleansing so yeah. your your doctor always assess uh, the situation before going to the next step so it's usually very safe unless it's a doctor doing and <laughs> the doctor says i can do more yes then uh, it can be oh i'm really sorry i hope he's recovering he's well it is great. quite he's strong great but it was too much you know he was like his diet was very um you know hardly any food and mm. uh it, the heat of course and you know at 80 he was 85 then it's too much yeah you're not i think 80 I think about you you will have to keep it uh, to the minimum possible rather than maximum possible yeah he was pushing yeah. the limits he's okay but i think mm. um yeah we have to become careful that we're not too dependent on these things to the extreme like anything to the extreme is going to be an issue right yeah a lot of people do tell me that i i like ayurveda because there is no side effect yes which is not true if it has an effect it has side effect yes the uh, the advantage of ayurveda is is that it's not disease specific it is person specific yes so when you use disease specific medicines there's a high probability of it going wrong uh, i don't know why people haven't realized that yet but it can go really wrong because each person behind that number or statistics is different yes. they have different issues there are different diet pattern different mindset energy all of that so uh, because of this person specific nature there is slightly less uh, uh, side effect in, in fact there is very less side effect nobody will actually have any the maximum side effect is having diarrhea for a day or two yes uh, there is yeah. not more than that yeah uh, i i think if ayurveda unfortunately in some part of india i am seeing that the focus has gone slightly away from the person to the health issue like in uk it's still the person because the mainstream is still different yeah. but in india sometimes some of the hospitals have uh, patented medicines for joint issue patented medicines for it's becoming like the modern system where the person is not that important in that case i would say there will be equal effect and and side effect hmm yeah yeah but ultimately the most important thing is for us to lead a sattvic life right that's the best thing mm. we can do actually i'm reading this brilliant book doctor which i'll share with you uh, about you know just even our character and having a sattvic mm. character in our work you know in the way we parent um and i can see i'm not there with everything <laughs> there's a bit of a way to go it's not just the food it's everything we do right yeah i think sattvic diet there has been recently i'm i'm seeing all the products that are being supplied now has a fair trade cru- cruelty free organic natural plant based all of these logos put together is sattvic yeah <laughs> basically yeah. that that's what sattvic is sattvic yes. is uh, living a life which doesn't harm uh, the other and, and also looks at the well-being of the bigger Yeah. uh it's it's well being in a bigger sense rather than your own self yes. uh self benefit and uh, and that's i think people understand that vegan means it's a philosophy and that's all part of part of the uh the the sattvic idea and sattvic can be a little bit more deeper meaning i think the uh, idea of this three guna sattva rajas tamas yes uh, what differentiates human being in my in my limited knowledge he said ability to sort of uh, access the sattvic knowledge whereas the basic animals mostly have the same soul structure same consciousness but they are limited to accessing uh, rajas and tamas so they can yeah. react to things 
and they can take care of their basic instincts yes but they can't do that satvik or that slight divine influence inside us intellect that that image of yes. the divine yes they yes the intellect and intellect. the intelligence yeah. yeah yeah that that's that's a that's a gift and i think uh, a bit of you know being excessively sense focused and excessively sort of consumer sort of uh, consuming different things from the for our own pleasure has actually pushed us towards more rajas and tamas and kept us away from sattva and that's why we are sort of seeing are depleting the nature we are depleting our environment and and people are realizing that these small changes that we make uh, has a huge role and sattva has to be there whatever be the name we give uh, it it will be there has to be there and i think the problem with all these the new vegan and this and that the problem is that that in itself if you if you're feeling cross inside you know you're feeling you know frustrated inside you having a nice organic meal is not going to sort it out you know so it is the whole thing that's the you know you can there's no point eating the best food if you're not working on i don't know i know it's a whole you know it's a cycle but you have to work on this as much as you work on this and i know they're interconnected but i think sometimes we can be we can think that this new organic food is the solution but we can still scream at our partners and you know just be irrational in our behavior but that's not going to do it it's it's the whole thing it's um yeah yeah it's everything but it's it's fascinating to me and it's such a a privilege to go deeper and deeper and get closer to that truth you know yeah we, you know we've got a whole we've got several lifetimes to do it so there's no rush there's no rush uh, so yes, where is your yes. pra- how can people find your practice what how do they connect with you then so my practice right now is in my home itself because of this uh, lockdown yeah. but but uh, it's it's uh, it's it's online now but yes. otherwise i practice in portslade okay. and uh, near brighton okay. from a place called the circle the circle holistic health clinic it's a yoga studio a art center a gym a osteopathy clinic ayurveda acupuncture everything is there wow. so it's sort of a health hub and it also has accom- accommodation for homeless people on one of the floor which is run by the uh, council so it's all owned by one firm which is the circle yeah. the idea is to uh, be good to yeah. the community and and nature it's a charitable uh, association it's not actually a profit uh, based uh, business and uh, yeah it it is I, people can reach me through uh, my email or my insta account or i have a website where i put my blog which is ayur doctor a y u r d o c t o r dot co dot uk uh, i try my best to update all the blogs yes but uh, i'm not that good in terms of technology yet but There's i try someone else who can do that <laughs> you don't need to be good at that and um so but, but people can also book you online right you can do a you, yeah. you can in normal situation you can right now the appointment system is blocked because of this current situation okay. it has to be through direct contact but usually you can go to the website and book online okay god there's so much we've got a uh, 1 minute 30 seconds left and oh. so much still i'd love to ask i didn't you. realize wow yeah, we don't even we didn't cover anything about the pulse or what i wanted to show yeah. you which you could this is a simple thing you could show them online is how they can look at their tongue every morning and see what's going yes. on inside that's a simple self diagnosis thing we can all do to learn a little mm. bit more about our mind and body but maybe we have to do that another time maybe we have to have you back another time and really deep dive <laughs> into one subject really fully Um, I I I should say that thank you very much and happy birthday to Bittu as well. Yes, I am you. seeing your posts and I always like your casual kind of chat. It's quite relaxing to share the information and 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 it's an enjoyable experience I think more Even than sort us. of mo- most of the talk I do is quite structured <laughs> and and I feel quite stressed 
yeah. this is by far the best experience at least for me oh, i don't know people and, who listen and for me because i'm talking to my friend you know and that we have other friends it's a pleasure <laughs> that's how it is thank you so so much for your time it's and we will speak to you again thank you yes thank, thank you. you thank you and Take bye care.